declining to, you know, speak to the media for one good reason that uh, the dignity and integrity of the office must be maintained. The attorney is uh, not a self-promoting office. I have declined several requests to both uh, print and visual media. Probably the first time I am talking to the media and I suppose um, the questions have not transgressed the, f the freedom of the attorney to answer what he would have, you know, he would like to answer and respond. And I've been asked to come and speak at the conclave as a keynote speaker. Sir, uh, you are the Attorney General of India and uh, since October 2022. So how has been your journey so far as a AG and you can talk about your jo journey as a lawyer uh, for the past 42 years? 43 years as a lawyer, okay, exclusively yes. as a private practitioner. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Of course, one has appeared for a larger number of governments, but mm -hmm. in individual cases, that's like a small peep into government problems. Mm -hmm. and, but this position is uh, very different. Mm -hmm. It's essentially as what I told somebody when mm -hmm. I was asked, uh, how do you enjoy your position as an AG? Yes. I said, I'm learning statecraft. Okay. What I mean by this is, mm -hmm. you are able to know how government really functions mm -hmm. and where functional issues confront the government mm -hmm. and what kind of uh, impressions people have about government functioning, apart from the political party considerations. Mm -hmm. So I now can see government functioning from a very, very close angle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would probably subscribe uh, to a theory that a uh, good deal of criticism about lapses in government functioning mm -hmm. are based on either some preconceived notions, mm -hmm. ideological mm -hmm. or otherwise. Yes party politics uh -huh. or complete lack of information. Uh -huh. So I really f feel uh, I'm honored to be here uh -huh. and I enjoy every minute of this work. Uh -huh. And when I was offered this position, uh -huh. just two days before my appointment, uh -huh. I had no idea of it before that. Okay. I only told that in order to be in service of the nation, why should somebody have any objection? Okay. Uh. So I think to be in service oh, of the yes. nation yeah. is what makes it, uh, you know, feel mm -hmm. happy about it. Mm -hmm. If you have other consideration, then you're bogged down by the, the weight of the office mm -hmm. and, and, the, and then the, the lure of mm -hmm. the private returns, mm -hmm. you know, the money you can earn as a private practitioner, yes. there's no comparison. Of course. So that doesn't make any difference, uh -huh. right? Right. Yeah. So there is a huge compensation by way of what you're doing with service to the nation. Yes. That can never be compared in any golden scales by mm -hmm. the amount of money you can earn. Yes. Mm -hmm. How has the, you know, the role of Attorney General uh, of India has evolved over the years, the, its power and prominence? What are its power and its prom prominence? I've been trying to look at it of uh -huh. late. Mm -hmm. If it's, there's no substantial change in the position of the Attorney General okay. right? ever since the Constitution conceived his office. Uh -huh. But at different points of time, mm -hmm. in the early period of mm -hmm. our constitutional history, mm -hmm. great figures like Settlewart, yes. and there had been more than one term. Mm -hmm. 
the call on the office was very different. Mm -hmm. Of course, there will be challenges in courts defending mm -hmm. uh, state decisions and <clears throat> including controversial constitutional amendments. Yes. But uh, as I find over a period of time, mm -hmm. the office of the Attorney General may have to get, may involve more than mere court craft and court litigation mm -hmm. preoccupation. Mm -hmm. Like uh, reforms. For instance, if you compare the office of an Attorney General in the United States, uh -huh. it is a huge institution. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we have not institutionalize it in that sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe that parallel is not very appropriate, but just to give an idea, I mentioned about it. Mm -hmm. So there are many things which perhaps today, beyond the court work, the Attorney General's office may have to take stock mm -hmm. and then uh, contribute. Mm -hmm. Like, so, uh, for instance, reforms of legal reforms, yeah, I think uh -huh. so. Uh -huh. I think so. The, the law commission is there. Uh -huh. Yes. But law commission's functions uh, within certain mm -hmm. framework and all uh -huh. that. But here I have some kind of a freedom yeah. to design what I need to do. Of course, uh -huh. I am subject to a lot of well-meaning governmental uh, uh -huh. uh, approvals or nods. Uh -huh. yes. But so far I haven't found anything which has stood in my way. Okay. I've received a very uh, significant cooperation mm -hmm. and also uh, freedom to do what I think should be done. Okay. 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 I should credit this government with that kind of a liberty mm -hmm. in my independent functioning. There's mm -hmm. no impediments at all. So, mm -hmm. what if the government wants to take a stand on? Uh, so, do you approve of everything? Yeah, there's always a dialogue. Uh -huh. In the sense, of course, as a law officer or the government, your mm. foremost duty is to defend. Mm. Like mm. any any client, lawyer, yeah. in a yeah. relationship. Yes. But defending your government, of mm. course, you look at policy implications, mm -hmm. national consideration, mm -hmm. a large range of issues to mm -hmm. be reckoned and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are occasions when we tell the government mm -hmm. probably that can be another point of view. Mm -hmm. So the willingness to listen to me, the inclination, I think it is there. Okay. But sometimes I also I also concur with the government's point of view. I mean that does not mean that uh, the attorney has Marges is, is liberty of thought mm -hmm. and freedom of expression. Yes. I don't think so. Okay. Mm. In all matters that you defend the government, so there is a proper consensus that happens. Of course. Okay, so there is a democratic, of course, democratic. Of course, thing. of course. I wouldn't like to pick a issue with the use of the word democracy in, uh -huh. in the decision-making process, yes. right? <laughs> because we we tend to use some of the phrases in common yeah. parlance and discourse, yeah. Yeah. because it has these words can be, connote certain things, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which sometimes are nebulous, mm -hmm. sometimes are very clear, right? So I have no difficulty and uh, yeah. deliberation take place at a reasonably high level. Mm -hmm. So coming to certain normal aspects, the digitization of uh, you know codes, what do you think are the positive effects of digitization and what are the challenges faced? If I'm a scientist, my answer would have been different. Mm -hmm. I'm neither a scientist nor a technologist. Yes. So the judges are also not scientists and yeah. technologists. They are offered something as a menu, mm -hmm. as part of a technology menu, mm -hmm. and uh, which is demonstrated to be reasonably in promotion of, let's say, justice administration. Mm -hmm. So why can't we use them? Mm -hmm. right. The world all over use of digital technology or mm -hmm. virtual platforms and uh, use of internets, etc have proved to be useful to a considerable extent. Mm -hmm. The apprehension that there could be other sidelines on these issues mm -hmm. may be there, but tell me which technology which human beings ever devised 
Yes, I never met with any problems. Mm -hmm. But this is a different kind of a problem, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I, I always uh, quote uh, the book written by George Orwell, 1984, mm -hmm. when he thought of a thought machine mm -hmm. that will be discovered in the future, mm -hmm. which can read our minds from wherever you are, yes. right? So we are in an age where technology can uh, undo or untie many of the issues we have. Mm -hmm. In the physical space, we are negotiating on many things. Mm -hmm. For example, setting up a court, which means the physical a building, then there are judges, mm -hmm. there's other infrastructure, mm -hmm. that means finance, right? Then there is communication, transport, people moving, yes. you know, uh -huh. from one place to another. Mm -hmm. All those set of things are just removed. Mm -hmm. So technology mm -hmm. says, uh, sit where you are mm -hmm. and try to deal with these matters. Yeah. So in the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. we still work under on the physical space, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure technology can do, l l take a lot of measures mm -hmm. which can address these problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, the legal tech tools, you know, the government uses them. Do you use it in your office, the new legal tech tools, some of them that makes, uh, you know, the drafting and a lot of, uh, you know, human work less. Do you use in your office any legal tech? Human work less in the physical, in one space. Yes. The physical space. Mm -hmm. But the same kind of work will, will still remain. Right in yes. the in the in the uh, cyberspace, uh -huh, cyber. but mm -hmm. this work, uh -huh. the communication sharing, mm -hmm. and the speed which it can be shared, and uh, the other correctional uh, you know processes mm -hmm. available, mm -hmm. so that it's not compared to the physical space work, you know. Therefore, yes, people are using it in a big way. Um, in your office? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I do both. Okay. I work on the I Chat do my GPT, research. Have you started using I do that? Res research on my own. You okay. think before mm -hmm. that, yes. But of course, for people like of our generation, mm -hmm. picking up the, uh, the hardware new. book, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. That's that's more uh, <laughs> exciting, interesting uh, than yes. reading on the net. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. So, what do you think of the concept of uh, online dispute resolution and its effectiveness? It should be. It should be tried. It should be tried. It should be yeah. tried. Ah. Some people have started writing about it. I think we can. India needs to do it. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, they look at the the vast expanse of a country, mm -hmm. and what one calls uh, the justice needs of different sections of the community. Mm -hmm which are different. Yeah. So whether in, in a urban area, a village or, mm -hmm. or a semi-urban mm -hmm. area, the kind of issue that people have. Mm -hmm. So an online dispute resolution, I think may save a lot of, it will serve a purpose and I'm mm -hmm. sure government should invest in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so have you uh, read about the COVID data like yesterday, the COVID? Uh, a data link, you know, where people who have taken the COVID uh, vaccine, yes. the data has been leaked. Yes. Uh, so th it's a major leakage. It is, it is, uh, it is. So the, the government is, is so big on digitization and, you know, this data protection bill and everything, but there's a lapse here. I mean, the government is in a denial mode. So. What else can the government do? And the Aadhaar card case is still pending in court. That is true, but Aadhaar card has a different issue. Uh -huh. That issue is about citizens, state intruding into citizens' privacy. Yeah. Somewhere you then will, either you give up technology, mm -hmm. right? No, 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 I don't want technology. Uh -huh. Either you give it up, right? You can't give it up. Mm -hmm. So how much of technology will, will peep into your life and my life? Mm -hmm. How much of my informational data Mm -hmm. can be used by the government for what purposes. Mm -hmm. So that's where you need some kind of regulation. Yeah. So this the regulation difference. can be a, a few steps here, a few steps here, right? Uh -huh. There can be disagreement on that. Mm -hmm. So I have seen the data protection bill. I think is a, by the, I mm -hmm. think by the monsoon session, it should be in the parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to address a lot of issues. 
but then so the d- data leakage is there and people uh, the private uh, information is out there and it has been through the government server itself and that's a serious lapse i'm uh-huh. sure so what is I the government i don't know how i can respond to because i uh-huh. i'm not very clear how it really happened and what government has done an internal job on that i'm not i have no idea uh-huh. i cannot comment on that on technology uh-huh. uh use and abuse for us as a layman to talk something mm-hmm. is different from an insider point of view as to how mm-hmm. uh, there can be uh any extent of breaches of mm-hmm. technology mm-hmm. integrity mm-hmm. it's possible yeah there are so many instances i think now across the globe mm-hmm. where technology breaches <coughs> yes the Have aims in china and, uh, it is occurring in china yes yes it's occurring uh, in us the hackers huh? mm. so with the gum, uh, government of india so you mm. can't comment on the stand on the leak you uh, i just give an example about uh, fake currency uh, yeah right yes how is it possible unless there is some intelligence which goes beyond your intelligence mm. right you are government intelligence mm. now i am a little more beyond your intelligence mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, this it happens right yeah hmm. so the new it rules you must have got yes to, yes 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 the content take down you know the government so there is some there is some close look into it now uh-huh. government is still uh, uh-huh. closely looking into it okay hmm. uh, so uh, so will that uh, come in it's, uh, it's it's still under debate i wouldn't be able to say anything about uh-huh. that but i know that the government is looking into it and and uh, maybe i think the government should consult the uh, uh, public you know some mm-hmm. cross section of the public yes it has uh, consumers mm-hmm. technologists engineers mm-hmm. and uh, even legal experts before they take a final call mm-hmm. the data protection bill was a process of consultation yes yeah. the Over telecommunication years, yeah. bill is also a process of consultation yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so i wanted to ask on the a new it rules data take down uh, there's this thing that uh, rule that uh, the government said it'll set up a body where uh, you know they will decide uh, as to who would uh, you know what information uh, should be contained so that it doesn't put the government in a bad light so who would be the i mean it is not clear in the new it rules so who who would uh, let, let's look at it from a slightly different angle uh-huh, uh-huh. we have the visual media uh-huh. and the regulation of visual media has been going on for a long uh-huh. time and um, so there is an an idea of a voluntary regulation uh-huh. we have a board you know yes yeah uh-huh. uh how much of it really does it work and uh, how many uh players in the field abide by mm-hmm. the kind of voluntary regulations mm-hmm. so between voluntary regulations of any establishment or a set of people mm-hmm. and externally imposed uh, mm-hmm. regulation mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. there will always be a dispute mm-hmm. can it be that the government can outsource uh to any agency uh-huh. what it may like to know first and mm-hmm. respond first mm-hmm. that will be uh, too radical mm-hmm. a step mm-hmm. uh, i don't think even a, a person like uh, george soros with his open society issues will talk about it uh, yeah <laughs> somewhere i think the sleaze of the government must be with the government mm-hmm. right okay so the ministry of home affairs is coming up with comprehensive and amendments to criminal laws like the ipc and yeah they are all in the process the yeah they are they are all in the so process so when will they come out uh, for you know for maybe after the comments. monsoon session because uh-huh. uh, we've also uh, thinking of a few more consultative pr- procedures uh-huh. so it may take a couple of months but i think government is very keen uh-huh. and uh, the prime minister is also very keen that we should to a cultural shift in mm-hmm. our understanding of crimes and crime reformation mm-hmm. yeah. hmm. okay so, so do you think there are a lot of redundant laws that there needs are. to be there are struck down to so like they are just lying there nobody huh. ever bothers about yes. it so not that they make a difference to our life 
so it doesn't matter whether you struck down or not but still like for example, i'll give an example mm -hmm. of this old uh, british law called mm -hmm. general clauses act mm -hmm. if you still find lots of reference to crown queen yes. right uh -huh. british establishment <laughs> you simply have left it like that okay, so there so are many such legislation uh -huh. despite repealing of large number of them mm -hmm. some of still remain okay. right, it just remain so you have no plans to stop them are you planning doesn't make a difference except they are there some ornamental piece of old legislation doesn't make a big difference but some lawyers could take it as a reference to defend no 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 it doesn't happen it doesn't no, happen. no 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 so any reforms that needs to be done in the collegium see every institution this uh -huh. institution of collegium is a product of a deliberation uh -huh. at a certain point uh -huh. of time right uh -huh. so some compromise somewhere would have uh -huh. taken it in a different trajectory uh -huh. right so it did not take place uh -huh. so we are stuck with this institution uh -huh. what is being done is try to make improvements within this institution uh -huh. which means what you make the judges more accountable transparent mm -hmm. and everything they do must be made known to everybody mm -hmm. sometimes this may or may not work mm -hmm. so a lot of lack of trust on what the collegium is doing mm -hmm. but if somebody were to get inside and see what they are doing maybe you will agree with good part of what the judges are doing mm -hmm. but at the same time we have a lot of other questions like will the collegium or the government and and the public would like to have a diversity of people mm -hmm. in the higher judicial mm -hmm. institutions mm -hmm. and uh, there is also a study which says only uh, 100 or 200 and odd families mm -hmm. right who, who, who are the creamy layers of mm -hmm. the legal fraternity uh -huh. uh, occupy you know all the starry positions yes we have all that right mm -hmm. so but i my impression is that the government is keen to uh, move ahead mm -hmm. and see if these issues can be addressed mm -hmm. and as of now keeping the collegium system you know intact mm -hmm. and in due course when the system itself finds that certain issues may have to be shared opened up okay. i think they will do it okay so i suppose it will happen organically Let's see. I I I can't predict uh, uh -huh. astrologically, uh -huh. right? But uh -huh. I'm sure it'll happen. Okay. So the law commission backs a sedition law, but the government says it's not bound by it. So what do you have to there say? There are large number of reports with the government. Uh -huh. Always said we're not bound by the law commission. Uh -huh. And um, having been in the law commission myself, yes. uh, uh -huh. I sometimes I felt that we need to. um open up new chapters on law commission okay. recommendations and governmental acceptance or non acceptance till such time it's essentially a perspective of the government on what law should remain on the statute book mm -hmm. i have no idea why uh, so far the government uh, has said no to the law commission recommendation mm -hmm. this is again a very uh challenge the issue because uh -huh. there are some sections of the community including let's uh -huh. say lefts liberals and uh -huh. ideologues uh -huh. would like this law to go yeah. because it says being abused yes and uh, given another equally important perspective that uh -huh. india is now susceptible to all range of unseen forces working to destabilize it uh -huh. both in terms of international economic power uh -huh. and global security uh -huh. and emergence of india as a big yeah. player yeah there are a lot of invisible hands working against the india stability yeah yeah so i don't know whether sedition laws should be an answer to mm -hmm. to manage this but maybe a, something very nearer to it i uh, we need to have probably mm -hmm. a closer look at it mm -hmm. Okay. So the centre has sought to review the SC order about the Delhi government's power. So, so why has it sought uh, to review the Supreme Court? I wouldn't like to comment on that now, because ah, okay. I'm sure the matter will go back to the court. Okay. The ordinance will be yeah. challenged, and, uh, uh -huh. okay. and I again, as an officer mm -hmm. at my level, mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't like to say anything which has a political implication. Yes, yes. Okay. But at mm -hmm. one level I find that uh, the shift in our political, uh, you know, processes, mm -hmm. coalition politics mm -hmm. and, and, and then, uh, other center state issues, uh, I wish we deal with them in a, uh, with a little more mature way, Maturity. right? Uh, the moment you start using certain other expression, mm -hmm. you are branded, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. <laughs> the problem is that. <laughs> what reforms are you working on? What are the law reforms that we will see any bills and acts? What would an attorney be, attorney's concern be? Yeah. That our system of administration justice mm -hmm. should be a comfortable system mm -hmm. for all. Yes. Our great uh, constitutional promise of access to justice. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of it can be made real? Mm -hmm. And to what sections of the community? Mm -hmm. So therefore, the most deprived sections of the community, economically, mm -hmm. socially, politically, mm -hmm. and how much of access to justice can reach them? Mm -hmm. So, apart from the clog in, you know, in the courts, pendency, burden, mm -hmm. is being talked about. Everybody yes, talks yes. about uh -huh. it. So, let's try to find some practical solutions to these problems. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to do some work. I hope uh, another year or so, mm -hmm. the, the outcome of these efforts will mm -hmm. show some results. So, there's mm -hmm. lack of legal knowledge among the common people. So, are the government doing something to, you know, to make them legally aware on certain, on the common laws? Um, when you say lack of legal knowledge. The common not, man. Uh, correct. Yeah. The, the uh -huh. common, uh -huh. I am also, you and me are common men, yes. women, right? Yes. In a, in a sense, yeah. in a yeah. sense. We have a image of the common women and the men. Mm -hmm. So then I look at it, what is the image? Is it a woman in a, in a remote uh, tribal area? who carries, uh, you know, uh, a head load uh -huh. of a firewood on her head and then walks miles. And uh -huh. or, or an urban woman who is educated and uh, who, is, who wants to support a family and there are other challenges in the pursuit of a career. So common women and men are of many kinds. Yes. So not that every common woman and men would like to know every law about a country, no, right? So we know many things about the constitution. Today, constitution is part of our life. Many people at least know there's something called the constitution. Mm -hmm. So beyond the elections, yes, right? Yes. People know something called muladika. Everybody in our country knows mm -hmm. the word fundamental, right? Mm -hmm. To some extent or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, so even in schools today, people are taught about uh, rights, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, so there is an increasing awareness of, uh, um, an amusing thing happened, I was, traveling once from uh, New uh, Long Island to New York airport. Okay. Uh, the cab driver asked me, sir, where are you from? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm so-and-so, uh, an attorney in Supreme Court of India. Oh, he's, oh that's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, in our country, Brown versus Board of Education, the Supreme Court of India made a mess, sorry, U.S. made a mess of it. Oh, oh they made I sat back in my uh, chair. I said, oh, cab driver, that's such yes. a knowledge. Yes. And that's where I think mm -hmm. the knowledge and in, uh, or of an ordinary uh, men and women in U.S. Mm -hmm. about their polity, about mm -hmm. what the Supreme Court of U.S. does. Mm -hmm. Today it's happening in a big way in our country. Yeah. Everybody media. knows about what yeah. Supreme Court is doing. Yes. And even yes. I say, uh, an auto rickshaw person will say, well, thanks to Supreme Court, I'm more uh, free and safe. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. People are say that. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, say any. Uh, tell us about the human rights uh, uh, that you are a part of. No, that's a. Uh, it's a honorary position uh -huh. I'm holding. Uh -huh. So it's a human rights initiative to s provide support to uh -huh. Indian diaspora in some parts of the world. Uh -huh. So the government is now empowering the CCI, the Competition Commission of India. You know, giving it a lot of power and. So, is it because 
we are facing uh, you know uh, we the threat is there from the big tech firms uh, to our data protection i thought it was bound to happen over a period of time the competition see many institutions like this whose perceived focus is let's say something but when you actually start working you find so many problems on the way then because of the way you handle the problems the perceived focus can also get diluted sometimes yeah but it's not so far happened to the competition commission okay. it's maintained more or less i think and it is the uh, integrity mm -hmm. of his original purpose mm -hmm. but if you look at what happened in what they call the sherman act in mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. the antitrust law yes is history over a long period of time mm -hmm. i think today <clears throat> because of uh, a very uh, uh un unperceived mm -hmm. interplay between technology capital mm -hmm. and human resources so classical capitalism is all about capital yes right uh -huh. so the role of technology mm -hmm. and uh, generation of capital mm -hmm. and use of capital for mm -hmm. social justice purposes etc through mm -hmm. social regulation we're not part of you know any free market ideology mm -hmm. when uh, adam smith talked about the wealth of nations yes. so there is a very interesting interplay between technology mm -hmm. capital and the capital's reach mm -hmm. into into what it can do for for a, for any people anywhere mm -hmm. so just to give an uh, uh, example we all serious minded uh, scholars uh, read what uh, learned economists like thomas piketty yes. in france is talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. he says it's time to move towards socialism yeah in one of his essays mm -hmm. then a uh, one of the long time us senators called bernie sanders mm -hmm. so he he says uh, what is wrong uh, if he um, you know critic capitalism mm -hmm. uh, call it something uh, very interesting mm -hmm. so there are these experiences uh, should give us some kind of an insights but at the same time i as a as a human being feel mm -hmm. that uh, creativity mm -hmm. innovation freedom mm -hmm. i think they are they are the essence of human life yeah where these values are uh, are stifled mm -hmm. then i don't think anything really takes place Yes, India is an arbitration hub. You know, the government is really pushing for it and make, wanting to make Delhi. But India is a huge country. We can make a Hyderabad arbitration hub or Delhi, Chennai. There's a lot of uh, gaps. You know, we don't have so many judges or mostly retired judges who have a lot who would have a lot of knowledge. Do we have all the resources to com compete with uh, you know Singapore or a Hong Kong or a London arbitration hub? i think we must have our own internal experiments mm -hmm. let us not talk about delhi right yeah. alone but the government has passed we need uh, we need to look at our entire country yes if we talk in terms of trade and commerce distribution mm -hmm. and addressing social justice issues alongside mm -hmm. every part of a country must be taken into account yes so but then we talk about ease and comfort in doing mm -hmm. arbitration so create as many centers as possible mm -hmm. right so i i think that plans. should be done it yes. can be done then See. if you if you look at one place mm -hmm. then a solo player also has a problem yes so singapore is not comparison is no comparison okay. is no comparison london uh, no, no. so many other things are happening in london and paris yes. if you want to look at their internal stories and you will uh -huh. you will, you'll feel uh, so what are the plans you have No, no, I have no plans. <laughs> the government. <laughs> the government has plans. Yes, the government has plans. And uh, yeah. the government is is uh, uh, working on it. Working on. So we it. are having a lot of discussions. So any new answers that you would like to share? We are having a lot of discussions on it. Yeah. I hope very soon the government will have some kind of a consultative process also. Mm -hmm. mm. So to make India. But to put India on the global map of I mentioned uh, yes. on a lighter side again in one of this 
meetings here. Mm -hmm. We had, we had the New York Convention. We talk about the uh -huh. New York Convention. I said it's time we have a New Delhi Convention. Yeah. So I think we'll have it very soon. Okay. <laughs> so any points that I missed that you want to talk about? See, there's a lot of cynicism, mm. uh, which is creeping into the mind of the youth for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. No country has been able to manage public perceptions on, on, on an informed basis. Because we have all contests between ideologies and competing ideologies mm -hmm. very strongly. And uh, then everybody talks about, well, access to education is increased. Yeah. Uh, and but what about employment? Uh -huh. And uh, so the migration of human resource to other countries mm -hmm. should it not be stopped. Mm -hmm. The brain drain issue, we've been talking yeah, about it. Yes. Maybe all those things will take a reverse stand, uh, okay. maybe another five, five years or so it takes. Because again, it's an attitude also. I feel, I say, well, America is a land of freedom and free choice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, nobody really uh, bores over you except, uh, right, on your uh -huh. merit, on your, uh, on your uh -huh. striving excellence. Uh -huh. And American constitution talks about pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Nobody stands against it, right? Yeah. So we all go there, I want to go there. Mm -hmm. So that migration pattern in the US is also probably uh, we'll see a reverse trend. Okay. But then U.S. would like to have more people coming there. Yes. People of their choice. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. so European countries, despite the European Convention, mm -hmm. have a lot of issues about people uh, who are not people of their choice mm -hmm. coming into their country. Mm -hmm. so, right? Yeah. yeah. So, India fortunately does not have all this problem so far. Yes. So we have. So if only our political process can turn new leaves mm -hmm. of setting good examples, ideals, mm -hmm. corruption-free, mm -hmm. uh, you know, examples, then I think we can handle many of them. But sir, we also take a lot of pride in Indians being the heads of uh, huge organizations like Satya Nadella and Sundar Pichai. So, I mean, we wouldn't want them to, you know, they have put India on the global map. A lot of I'm not Indians saying people should come back. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. But moving away from or moving out of India for education and for employment, mm -hmm. if we're able to create, uh, you know, where, you know uh, institutions of good yes. standard, uh -huh. why should they go abroad? People used to go to Russia for medical education. Yes. Some of the East European countries have medical education because you don't, the cost of medical education is exorbitant. Yes. So the cost of higher education throughout the world is exorbitant, mm -hmm. not only in India. Mm -hmm. right? yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yes. The cost of legal education in the US is enormous. Okay. Uh, so so, and so um, one of the leading uh, American uh, academics, uh, Brian Tamanaha, writes a book called The Failing Law Schools. Okay. Mm. So 42 years in the legal profession, what, uh, what is your you know, giveaway to the younger generation of lawyers? There are a lot of values which are very special to our country. Mm -hmm. Let us continue to practice them. Mm -hmm. Tolerance, mm -hmm. integrity, <laughs> then belief in doing uh, your duty to the highest level of responsibility, mm -hmm. whichever calling you are. Uh -huh. The moment you want to keep them aside and, and uh, pursue a, a high trajectory of monetary returns and economic returns, I think then you're wrong, right? There are, mm -hmm. I emphasize that the cultural values of a country mm -hmm. have, a, have a lot to keep us together. I say this despite a lot of other critiques from yes, yes. The, the, you know, certain ideological yes, points uh -huh. of view. Uh -huh. I think it's important. How does a country really uh, flourish mm -hmm. in terms of saying 
here is a comfort level for different sections of the community. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the material comforts, the economic comforts. Mm -hmm. Then the social comforts where culture, mm -hmm. social interactions, mm -hmm. all that yes. are not meddled with at all. Yeah, yeah. So it is a part of the social total comfort levels mm -hmm. the community can should offer. Uh -huh. But where you want to invest, for instance, you want to invest on a on a family as an institution, uh -huh. maintain it as an institution of importance. Uh -huh. Or you want to invest on individuals as institutions. Mm -hmm. The two things have a lot of difference. The state investment, I think, must be at both levels, family and individuals. Mm -hmm. Individuals because education happens to individuals. Mm -hmm. Employment, you know, belongs to individuals. But none of us, I think, can ever live with individuals alone. Mm -hmm. Both, if you look at the non-human species, mm -hmm. And, and thereafter our evolution as a human species. Mm -hmm. We look forward to being together. Mm -hmm. So family as an institution, alongside in investments and individuals, both investments must happen. When it does not happen, I think there will be a problem. Culturally, then we will be falling apart. Yeah. Well, somebody can boast of a the highest level of a social evolution by saying all of us have got equality. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, did not Marx say that uh, in, a, in a communist uh, society, mm -hmm. so I may work in the morning, mm -hmm. then uh, read Shakespeare in the afternoon, and do fishing in the evening. Yeah. So, I, so <laughs> that's, that's a vision. That's but then. It can, it can also kill something else. Hmm. So I didn't want to get into the details about what's happening in a country like US or China. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a highly value-oriented comparison, but it's important we look at it. And therefore, my advice to the younger generation will come into law particularly, because, um, well, yes, we must protest against that which is unjust. And, and that which should never be part of our law and justice. But um, when we try to project certain um, happenings in our community mm -hmm. as something generally part of our social life, yeah. then there's something goes wrong. So let us trust in our institution and uh, Keep moving with the institutions, refine them mm -hmm. as much as we would like to re like to refine ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think it must go hand in hand. The National Company Law Appellate Tribunal, it's a very important body and uh, very important court. They have so many cases. But you know, in a country like India, it's so huge. So do you think we should have enclad offices in all the capital cities so that you know the burden is less? We do have NCLT. But NCLAT is just, do you think we need to have more uh, courts such as NCLAT? See, when we talk of an appellate body, uh -huh. the common idea always is a place where an appellate body must exist, yes, yes. right? You look at benches of high courts, uh -huh. right? So there are always some reservations about opening up a new bench in a different uh -huh. place. And uh, how, how does this uh, diversion uh, or distribution of work among different benches, has it really made a difference? Has it uh, resolved the demands of a particular area, mm -hmm. right? I don't think we have done any systemic study on this issue. Now, there have been demands that Supreme Court benches should sit all over the country, right? So do you think it, it very difficult to have a point of view on that. So coming back to NCLAT, so then we must have uh, more than one bench. Then how do you organize benches? Then how many chairmen you have? Every region should have a chairman or what? So then maybe it's good, it's fine. But uh, is that going to solve the problem? Or let us look at the experience of these tribunals in the past 
you know, 5 to 6 to 10 years and see should we go on the same trajectory or trajectory should be changed. Should the law undergo a change? We need to do some kind of a study. So institutions, the courts like NCLAT, they are overburdened. Yes. I know, they are overburdened. Okay, so I think I'm done. Anything that you would like to add again? You done? I'm also done. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs>